I'm in my Nara era. Hey guys, today I'm making a chocolate milk PC from scratch. An organic, non-GMO chocolate milk PC. Let's build a chocolate milk cooled gaming PC in this super cute case from Ironside Computers. It's been a minute since I attempted a hard line liquid cooled loop, so let's see how this goes. Let's get into it. The motherboard I have here today is the Z790 Aorus Pro X in the all white colorway from Gigabyte. So we're first gonna install the CPU, which is the Intel 14700K. These are actually parts that I was going to use for a different build a while back. Patriot Viper, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. And this is gonna go in the second and fourth slots. All right, so I've just installed the Corsair XC7 Elite LCD water block. This water block, um, I think you can use it for both Intel and AMD. You just have to swap the bracket and it does have an LCD on it. So we're gonna be able to put some cute chocolate cow gifts. Um, I did end up taking the RAM out again just to spread the paste. So let's just pop that back in really quickly. The SSD I have in here is gonna be from Patriot Viper. Now we're ready to toss everything into the case. All right, this is the Ironside chocolate milk case. I think it might actually be sold out, unfortunately, but they do still have the other flavors. They have strawberry, banana, and original. It comes with this magnetic straw and it is a print of the Corsair 3500X case. So we're just gonna pop this open. Printed all of the panels except the top. It's honestly so adorable. This front panel just pops off. Uh, although I don't know if we need to do that. It might just make things easier though. And then all the accessories are in this like cardboard box right here. So we're gonna have to open that. All the cables and stuff are white though, which is really nice. Oh wow, this is pretty much like an all, there's like a lot of Corsair stuff going in this build, except for the power supply. So let's install this motherboard, shall we? It's like not slotting in nice. Oh, I lied. There is a cable under it, so double check that there's no cables preventing you from slotting your motherboard in. Now it's slotted in and it's just time to screw it. I'm gonna get a uh, electric screwdriver. Some of these are in hell hard to reach places. Thankfully this is magnetic though. Oh yeah, so each set of fans has a fan and RGB cable. And then there's like this gold part. So the, these gold parts don't match up together. It's the dots that match up with the bars. So you just put it like this. And then I'm gonna wanna mount it like this. So if you do need to flip it, you can. This like unlocks, but I don't need to. I'm in my Nara era. Hey guys. Today I'm making a chocolate milk PC from scratch. An organic, non-GMO chocolate milk PC. Ugh, okay. I'm doing this the, long, the right way and it would have just taken, I was like trying to cut corners, but it would have just taken me less time if I did it right the first time, but it wouldn't be a PG Tech video if we didn't do that. Anyways, so there are three different types of screws. The longest one, the 35 millimeter, it's for if you were gonna mount your, say you were gonna do radiator case and then the fans. Then you would use the long ones. Wait, these are the long ones. Um, but we're not doing that. We're just mounting the fans directly onto the radiator. So we're gonna use these 30 millimeter ones. And actually I'm gonna leave these unscrewed because we're gonna have to screw on um, the reservoir onto it. So I'm gonna do every single one except for that one. And then the third screw that it comes with is to mount the actual radiator onto the case. 
so that took me way longer than it was supposed to. But anyways. All right, this is done. Now we can mount it to the case. Let's set these other fans aside for now. But basically with the 3500X, you can actually, with this case, you can mount something to the side or to the top, uh, as in a 360 millimeter radiator to the side or the top. I want to mount mine to the side, I think. Um, if I was cooling my GPU, I would do both, but I don't actually have a GPU block. So let's just go ahead and mount this and then we'll do the top fans. So to mount this, all we're gonna have to do is stick that in there like that. And then on the back, we're going to screw this in. We're gonna be using these screws. All right, I'm gonna use my uh, ratcheting screwdriver because I'm gonna try to show you guys. I think I'm gonna want it towards the very top. So I'm, the first screws that I do, I'm not gonna screw in like all the way because that way I can still adjust everything if I need to. So I'm gonna do the top right and then the bottom left. So that, that way I can ensure that everything's aligned or like as aligned as it can be. And then see when you have it not tightened all the way, you can still adjust the height of it um, to go where you need to. And since we're doing liquid cooling, I don't think I want it to be all the way at the top because um, it's gonna be hard to tighten the tubes or whatever, the fittings. So I feel like here is good. And then now that I know where I want it to go, I'm only gonna use like six screws too. One there. Now, if I was like shipping this or giving it to someone, I would just do all of them, but this is just for me, so I don't care that much. All right, so that's installed. Now let's do the other fans and move on with the rest of the build. Okay, I've decided that for two of the, or no, sorry, the top is gonna be exhaust as well, but for some reason, I have a bunch of these reverse fans, so I'm actually going to just flip them. These are the Lianli SL Infinity fans. These are the old version. They do have a new version now that's wireless, but they're super easy to install. These two sides do not go together. It's actually these two sides that go together. I do have, so I was actually gonna do two intake right here and then one intake here. So we can also just do that right now as well. I'm gonna grab one of these and just put it right here. I think I actually want this facing the other way, so I'm gonna unlock this and pop it off. And now we can flip this the other way. Now we can pop it right back on. Oh my gosh. It just popped the whole thing off, but... Okay, there it is. Okay. No. Okay, well anyways, that was to demonstrate to you guys how to flip this, but I didn't actually have to do it. So we are going to route these through the back, right up here. And then I'm gonna mount these right there. We'll just be using regular, just these like regular fan screws that it came with. Might be easier to use a ratcheting screwdriver because it does take some force sometimes. Okay, now we're gonna set up the last set of fans and these are gonna be exhausting in the top. Top of this case actually comes off. You can just pull it. I'm scared I'm gonna break a nail, but yeah, you just pull it off. Now we're gonna screw on these fans and I do need these case screws. They're these like black little super twisty looking ones. All right, now we just need to screw these fans in. I haven't even started the loop, guys. I'm so tired. I'm starting to get loopy. Okay, so I just didn't even listen to my own advice. I need to loosen this. And then we'll install the next one. That's honestly like probably good enough. All right, so at this point, I'm going to unbox the power supply and get the cables out so I can plug those in, but I'm not actually gonna plug them into the power supply side until I'm sure the loop that we make isn't leaking. This is the core reactor too. I got the 850 watt, but apparently SPD says you can power a 5090 with this. Anyways, this is what she looks like. It has black connectors and white cables. So we're gonna want two CPU cables. 
And I think that's all I need for now. Probably get the rest later. I'm gonna do some cable management and I'll be back. That's gonna plug in in the USB slot. All right, here's my workbench with everything I'm using for this water cool project. These are just, what are these like 14 millimeter outer diameter tubes? These are the frosted ones. I got these from Corsair. I think each pack comes with like two super long ones, but they go by fast, especially if it's your first time at liquid cooling, you might ruin a bunch. Some of your bends might come out super wonky. If you don't heat it up properly or evenly, it might crease or bubble and then you can't use it anymore. So. Definitely order more. So to cut them, Corsair has this like little clamp thing that you can put on the table and then you like saw it, but it's so annoying. So I actually got this like mini cutoff saw. Um, I just ordered this from Amazon and it made things so much faster. You need a heat gun. You need this noodle thing. So you shove this <laughs> little silicone noodle in the tubes when they're straight and then you heat it up over the heat gun and then you carefully bend it. If you're using the saw, you also need safety goggles because safety first. And then you also need this. When you saw it with the saw, there's like a lot of debris and stuff. So you need to use this. It's like a pencil sharpener. You go like this while you're holding the other side, obviously. And then you flip it and you do it on the other side to get the outside. And then obviously you need all of your like fittings and stuff. You also need one of these like filler bottles um, to help you fill the thing and then you'll also need either coolant or distilled water. You can buy distilled water at most stores. I would get like the biggest one you can get, like at least a gallon. So Corsair gives you this plug tool because all of your radiators and stuff are gonna come capped with this thing. So you need something to help turn it. But in a pinch, a quarter works too. But yeah, that's basically it. So this is powered by this IQ link cable. So we're gonna plug that in because it's gonna be really hard to do it after. And then this will just route through the back of it just to make it easier. Now we're gonna mount this right here. <laughs> 90 degree fitting. All right, so this one is gonna have to go all the way from here and then just like this. So this one's gonna be simple. So I wonder if this, oh my gosh, yeah, this would work. I would just have to bend this. All right, let me explain a little bit. So for the CPU block, there is an inlet and an outlet. They're not interchangeable, so it only goes one way. This one is the inlet for the CPU, which means the outlet for the reservoir has to go to it. If you think about it, the flow of it is the cool water is stored here. It needs to go out of here and into the CPU. It becomes hot. Now it needs to cool back down in the radiator. The radiator doesn't have a designated in and out, so it just goes wherever. Um, so it goes here and then it needs to go back into the reservoir where it stays until it goes back around. And if you have a GPU, it would just go like, it goes out to the GPU, now it goes out to the CPU, and then now it goes here. And then if you have a second radiator, um, that would also be in the loop. Again, I didn't get a GPU block, so we're just doing the CPU today. Basically, if you decide to liquid cool, you're gonna spend a fortune on fittings. There's different ones. So these are um, thread into each thing, so like the radiator, reservoir, pump, and then there's a hole for the tube. So you would screw this side into the pump or whatever. And then on the other side, there's a ring and like the other half of it. So if I was hypothetically like ready to actually put something in here, what I would do is first I would put this white thingy and then I would put the ring like just about right here. And now we're ready to, all you have to do is like, screw that part on so that's how it would go and then you would just connect the other side to the other part that you need to connect it to but yeah that's how you do that so we're just going to do that a bunch of times all right let's bend some tubes we need this little <laughs> make sure you, you have the right measurement because there's gonna be different thicknesses of it i'll put whatever i have down below okay honestly <laughs> I don't even think you should be watching this as a tutorial. Like this is just a for fun video because I'm so bad at doing this. Like, but basically like my bend needs to be like around here, give or take. I mean, you can always like cut off some at both sides. So just be a little uh, generous with that, I guess. Maybe I should put my goggles back on. But basically we're gonna put this in and that's because once it gets heated up, it's gonna lose its shape like really easily. So we need it inside there so that it doesn't just like fall apart. You feel me? And then you're also gonna need one of these like angle measure things. Although this one isn't, probably isn't the right one for me. So we're just gonna slowly heat it up over here. We have to like turn it a bunch and like don't hold it too close because 
it'll bubble. Like if you do it too much, it'll bubble. But if you do it too little, it won't bend properly. I'll show you guys my tube graveyard sometime. There's a lot of different ways you can fail this. Okay, it's starting to have a little give. See that? But it's not ready yet. I think it'll wrinkle if I do it now. Oh my gosh. It's like a good 90. And I just need to wait for it to like cool down. It's 90 degrees. Period. Yeah, it's gonna be soft for a bit, so we're gonna let this cool down. And then once it's cool, then we can pull this out. Okay, so now that this is cooled down, we can pull this out. And now I'm gonna measure it and see how much I have to cut off of each side. Yeah, I have to cut just a little bit, and hopefully I won't overcut. Measure twice and cut once. So I just got this table saw and I'm not gonna lie, I'm like low-key kind of scared. First, we have to tighten this clamp. Wow, that made it so much faster. Now we do still have to clean it up with this thing. You basically just have to get all those like nasty edges off. Look at that, period, we did that. Okay, one of them is done. We still have one, two more. Okay, only two more, period. We're almost in the home stretch. I have to get gloves because tightening these fittings hurts your hands so much. Also, um, I think you're supposed to use like, there's like a motherboard cable jumper that you can use. And I thought I had one, but I literally can't find it. Also, this one is so janky. I wanted it to come out the top, but the way everything's like spaced out is just not possible. This is probably the most scuffed loop ever. And I really hope it doesn't leak. Screw this. And now we're gonna put this and install it right here. So we're gonna wanna not tighten any side all the way. We're gonna slowly tighten each side a little bit. He's supervising me. Yes, he is. You're supervising. <laughs> Yes, he is. He's such a good boy. He's seeing if I did a good job. Oh, shit. Oh my God, what do I do? Pretty much done with this build. All we have to do is slot in the GPU and then I'll have to run the loop for a while to let all the air out. But here is that ASUS Dual 4070 Super. It's a teeny tiny little card. I usually expect dual fan cards to just use the eight pin, but it's that's not the case with this one. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out because sometimes it's like harder to slot it in. Now we can just slot this in. I think I took out the wrong bracket. That is now slotted in. Okay, it's time to pop all the panels on. I can't even see like where it's supposed to go. The top panel. And finally, the finishing touch. Look at that, I'm so happy. Should I put boba in it next? 